Welcome to Stone Top. Uh, <laughs> this is session four. So sorry. I'm really not. Sharing a moment of being like, well, that sucked. I would like to threaten the rock. Yeah, this is all my fault. So Karina, uh, your destiny, because you have the destined background. When you start a session, roll plus, and I'm changing this, uh, roll plus omens. And uh, on a seven plus, uh, the GM will describe a recent omen, dream, or vision. 10 plus, you can ask a follow-up question and get a clear and helpful answer. On a six minus, tell us the nightmares you've been having and how your fears play into them and hold plus one omen. You have suffered the nightmares twice now, which means that you are at plus two omens. So that is a nine. Would you like to burn bright for a 10 plus? A clear, helpful answer from Jeremy is a rare and precious thing. I'll burn bright. I've got enough to burn bright. All right. So I think I am going to weave this in to kind of where we left off. Right? It's not like you're dreaming at this point, right? You had set off from Gorlas's uh, right. snares kind of like towards the last place where you, you know that you could find where Gorlas would have been. So you're hiking uphill still kind of going further and further out of that valley into those highlands that are on the map. And I think the rhythm of the hiking, right, and just the kind of constant exertion of going uphill, your mind's kind of wandering in an almost dreamlike state. But the last dream that you had, that the, the, the seeing the staff and seeing the, uh, like it become the sun with these green flames like roiling out a lot of, outside of it, that kind of keeps reasserting itself into your mind. I think it's when you are actually like heading down a little bit of a slope, right? Like you've, you've, you've hit a crest and you start to go down. Maybe you've kind of like almost forgotten that you are out there with someone else. And Alex or Eilman, one of the two of them say something. And you turn back and Alex, I believe you you said at the end of the last session that Eilwyn was riding piggyback on on Alex <clears throat> uh, to sort of like help make time through this. So Karina, you you kind of turn back and you see like the angle is just right that Alex is backlit by the sun, and there's just this like Corona coming off of them of just like really 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 striking like almost immediately after that there's a like a, just a step i do you have like the staff strung on your back or are you just kind of like holding it or what probably in my hands okay karina you like get that like moment of like almost as uh alex is limbed by the sun and then there's just a shift and a step. Actually, it's a stumble uh, on Alex's part. And that particular stumble, the eye ends up passing in front of the sun and just like <clears throat> turns this really, really, really bright green that turns that halo extremely green, almost like fire. Uh -oh. <clears throat> um just like that whole tableau it, it, it just striking you as, as as being full of meaning as soon as, as you see it so um you get to ask a follow-up question and get a clear helpful answer do i get any like sense of foreboding it makes you think of a tableau that you saw when you were in barriers pass that you saw not long before you got the fuck out because it was when one of the like kind of weird elders there sort of like brought you in to see it as like, look, look, you're coming. 
and you know like you know, you know effectively saying that that uh uh they they let you in and let you stay there because of your your prophecy they they knew about my prophecy it sure looked like it like they they showed you this room and there is this tapestry with a figure bearing a shield and there's basically a battle going on between the sun and the eye and th this figure was sort of standing between them oh shit and and the elder that that showed this to you was all like see see this is what lies ahead <clears throat> so and that was karina's cue to be like bye forever in case it's not clear that little like visual that you saw that the, that you got up there just really struck you as yeah. of that that tapestry you have still not really asked me a question about cool. the, uh, the vision like, that i just saw yeah because everything that you've everything that you've asked is really just sort of establishing backstory and, and okay, cool. about the, the world so so in this vision that i saw that was obviously significant did i get a sense at all of like Eilwyn and alex are both visible obviously because they're the ones who were silhouetted by the sun and then the light changes mm -hmm. um do i get any sort of sense of like danger to them or suddenly they are dangerous or corruption or like any like flavor coming from those two specifically the kind of overwhelming feeling that you get is that these two are tied to that destiny and okay. that you're not it's not clear at this point how um but you feel very certain that protecting the two of them is particularly important and particularly and, and it's and it is part of your destiny got it okay whether or not it is that Eilwyn is in fact a manifestation of the air like is going to be the eye and and alex is going to be the sun and you have to stand between them or if it's that there's a conflict coming and they are somehow like important for 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 preventing that conflict from destroying the world who knows right like these are all all things that uh that that that, that could be happening but but you just get this feeling of like shit this tableau that you just saw is like a premonition and a, a a preview of that tapestry that you saw well shit well this is happening yeah. i've like alex like writes themselves gets their legs back onto them and is like Eilwyn, you have a better view from up there is there uh any sign of the trap golas said he was setting when he got um and he, they just kind of trail off. Uh, <laughs> he had some trouble. Yes, and um, you may, yes, you may consider that an invitation to use the stuff. <laughs> I mean, first I'm going to like take a mundane look around, but. So uh, before you get into like, you know, studying or triggering any moves or anything, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you get, so the, like I said, you've been kind of moving up out of the valley and this last kind of ridge that you went over and that you're standing on top of right now um the 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 it, it's sort of a low sweeping valley that's kind of laying out in front of you and <clears throat> the i think probably the thing that jumps out at you the most uh as you're looking down at it Eilwyn, is that the 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 it's kind of like a low sweeping valley that, that gently curves back up into another hill and on that hill uh, which you could probably get to in like the next half hour or so. Um, that hill is covered with some of the biggest, oldest, gnarliest yew trees that you have ever seen. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Have, have the the you all the players seen pictures of yew trees? Oh um, shit! Okay, yeah. The big gnarly motherfuckers. Uh, mm -hmm. big That's gnarly. some real haunted grove looking bullshit. Oh right? yeah. Oh yeah. The whole the whole hillside is like that. 
and it gets they get bigger and like like uh, uh, more gnarly looking the further up that hillside you go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and Karina, you probably would know that like uh, uh, um, you've been out here before, and I think you probably know that Gorlas like basically that valley is as far as he lays his traps. And like he's, it's Gorlas, right? He's got his own way of, way about things. He refuses to go anywhere near all of those yew trees, right. normally. All right, so that's what you see. Um, so I'll win. Mm -hmm. uh, did you want to like look more closely or or? I mean, I've been asked to look for a trap for the the snare mm -hmm. that Gorlas has been setting. Um. I assume I've been seeing the ones so far because I imagine Karina's been pointing them out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I probably have at least a decent idea of what I'm looking for, but it's probably going to require some closer inspection. I don't know. Basically, if you want to like scan this area and look for anything out of the ordinary or Gorlis's traps or whatever, yep. yeah, it's going to be different realities. Okie dokie. Uh, that's an 11. Oh, nice. So, so I think the, the, the like, where are uh, Gorlas's traps is probably what here is useful or valuable. Either that or, yeah, what happened here recently. You definitely are like, oh, yep, okay, there it is. You spot, like, okay. a very obvious clearing where, once again, you see uh, a couple of snares just sort of, like, blowing in the wind because they've been cut. And it's just like a couple little bits of 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 of, of twine kind of flitting on them. Um, Don't love that. Uh, well, you've got a good vantage, and you've got sharp eyes. Um, I think you also spot like just kind of scanning around, like on one of those yew trees on the far side of the the the, the valley. It. Just something about the the light catches just right, and you see either a forest folk carving on it, or maybe one of the marks that Gorlas said that he was making. But there's very definitely like on like you can see it from here, like a big cut made on one of those trees. Like big enough that I can see it from way over here. Okay. Yeah, which is which is saying something, right? And and it's yeah. not big, right? But it like like it's just deep, and it just I think it's the the contrast of the the, the cut on the the wood versus like the old sure. gnarled bark. All right, so you get two other questions. Um, yeah, I am gonna go with what happened here recently. A lot of what you would expect, right? The yeah. direction that I'm going for this mm -hmm. is. What happened here between Gorlas leaving and us getting here? So as you're kind of like scanning the valley on the other side of it, you spot a dead thing. And at first you're like, what the fuck is that? And then you're like, that, holy crap, that must be a Krinwin. Um, And there's basically just like a dead Crinwin laying out in like one of the, the the spaces between the trees and it's hard to say from this distance how long it's been there but it is definitely a dead Crinwin and you get the sense that it hasn't been long because well nothing's come to eat it yet so that could be because it's a Crinwin I you know who or what is really in control here? Well, I think the I think the obvious answer is the right answer. Uh, the, you are entering Crinwin territory. Um, <clears throat> the, the the wind shifts a little bit, and you catch this like awful scent in the air, and you're reminded of what Karina said about how it's um, like they have a an odor to them that they often. Mm like leave little slime trails on things. But you also, I think, spot on one of, so there's that slope going up on the far side. And there's maybe like to your left, a kind of like a rocky prominence uh, on it. And there's this big old gnarled tree coming out of it. 
and you're just sort of like sticking out over the drop. And in that tree, there's just this big mass of something. And like if you didn't know better, you would say it was a gigantic wasp's nest. But it's far, far too big to be that. I'm just also trying to decide if Eilwyn knows what Crinium looked like. I think we asked last time if think? you had ever seen one, and I think the answer was no, because you don't really like get out into the right. world at all. Right. But now so, I've seen a dead one or something. I guess that's a question for Karina, who has seen Crinwin. Okay. Um, so we know that that they're you know, they're they're about the size of a child. They're definitely misshapen and they have like little pock marks that, that show up on them sometimes, like sores, like big ones uh, or pustules, I think we called them. Um, and they live in the trees and yeah. they camper about. Andy yes, Circus yes. is the motion capture performer for them yeah. in the HBO <laughs> series. If Karina had to describe them to someone, how would, how would she describe them? Their limbs are not proportional in the way that human limbs are, like their arms are kind of too long and their fingers are very long. Um, and so it's it's somehow, from, aside from the other obvious things, like the, the fact that they leak weird oil from pustules because they're gross. Um, and the fact that they're like child size, they're, the proportion of their limbs, I think, and the fact that they are like, like human, but not quite and therefore like they have a sense of wrongness to them when you look at them. So Eilwyn, regardless of whether you've seen a Crinoid before or not, you see what at first you're thinking is maybe a naked child, but then with two long arms or with like limbs that are too long and spindly. Um, and then you're like, whoa. Well, I'm definitely reporting back the Uncanny Valley bullshit and the wasp's nest and, and all of that. Um, and I would hope with that kind of description that Karina and probably Alex would be able to put, pin it down. Oh yeah. I mean, like, and, and I think once you like notice it and point it out to them, they have no problem mm -hmm. like in the, these things. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Karina, it, it's absolutely like, oh shit, that's a dead Crinwin just sort of lying there. Um, you definitely can't tell what it's dead of from this distance. Um, but as far as that wasp's nest go, like, do you think Karina has ever encountered a Crinwin hive before or a Crinwin nest? Maybe once. She might not have known what it was at the time because she was like, this is fucking gross and just sort of beat it. Um, but I think she like she was able to put together what it was a little later, maybe like from stories from the other trappers and hunters. It appeared to be empty, like it was wet and rotting, and I like that that she didn't actually see an intact one. So yeah, when you see the one that 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 Eilwyn points out, you're like, oh, that. Don't like that. Um. So you got a valley before you. You've got a dead Crinwin and a Crinwin nest and definitely entering Crinwin territory. Um, and Eilwyn has spotted the first of the uh, kind of markings that Gorlas said that he left on his way from when he, when he wandered away from the place. Or actually when he wandered back. You've got maybe two hours, three hours of daylight left. Uh, so I guess my question is, what do you do? I think Alex starts like humming the Crinwin rhyme to themselves. Mm. Right? Long of limb, pale of eye. Um, I'm trying to remember because my, like, as a player, I have a dim memory that, like, I have always assumed. I've always thought of Crinwin as, like, nocturnal primarily. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think Alex, Alex is, like, similarly racking their brain, trying to be like, did I like, did I ever actually hear that somewhere or have I just like assumed? Yeah, if you want to uh, spout lore about it, that's... Uh, would anyone like to help me? I think Karina would. Yeah. I feel like that makes the most sense. Sure. Yeah, for sure. I only got two. I got two and a one. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, Jeremy, Thank that's a, that's a whole four. Um, Excellent. So the nursery rhyme that you're trying to remember, 
is trust not thine ears among the trees, despite the most desperate of pleas. Look ye up and scan the skies for snarling teeth and pale dead eyes, long of limb and gray of skin, crin win. Crin win. There we go. They must have just like internalized it deep, deep down. Yeah, you know what? <clears throat> Let's just fucking go for it. Um, so the two of you are kind of standing on this hilltop, having the little like, okay, well, I mean, they're nocturnal, right? Are are they? I I don't know. <laughs> like, you know, There's definitely having... a tale about them being out at dusk. So we've mm-hmm. kind of established that Alex, you get tired easily, right? So you've paused, you're having this like opportunity for a conversation. What did you set down aside from Eilwyn? Uh, you know, just to, like like to to to, to kind of take a breather while while you were figuring out your next yeah. move. I think probably my mess kit. Okay. Like that feels like that feels like a pretty big thing to just like keep holding on your back or whatever, like while you have a chat. Gotcha. All right. So you kind of like just kind of put those things down off to the side. Maybe yeah. like have a have a seat and put it off to the side. Is there a single folk tale where we that is definitely unambiguously happens in the daytime? Kind of right as you are having like like saying that, uh, Karina, something moves out of the corner of your eye, and you're like, what? And the fucking mess kit has literally just like <laughs> disappeared into the brush. And there's like this rattle, 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 and like, like, uh, uh, you know, things moving, like scampering through the 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 the, the brush. Um, but of course, the brush isn't that thick, so you can actually kind of see, like, this fucking crimwind just like bolting and scampering through the woods and like making towards one of those, uh, towards one of the the pines. At the same time <clears throat> that you're sort of registering this, I'll win. Uh, you kind of like turn just in time to like see one of them like creeping up right behind Karina and like literally about to pounce on her. <clears throat> Iowen, what do you do? Iowen is not so much on the attack. Mm-hmm. Um, she's just going to try and alert uh Karina, okay just a you know oh my gosh behind you it's not actually a scream it's more of a no. high pitch <laughs> that's delightful um uh. okay so karina you hear this like kind of squeak come from Iowin's direction <laughs> and <laughs> kind of like it's not enough of a noise to like really make you like like your 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 warrior instincts kick in. So like as you turn like what? It's like <laughs> suddenly there is a fucking thing on your back. A- I'm helpful. <laughs> <laughs> There's just like like a snarling, stinky, scratching mass like like 30 pound weight just like on your shoulder and your back just sort of like scratching away at you and grabbing at something around like like grabbing at stuff that's on you um what do you do if if i may add an extra detail yeah i've always pictured that krenwin have an extra set of knuckles (gasps) like their fingers their fingers are jointed in like one extra place that's great okay so it's on my back Yep, it's on your back. The- yeah, I mean, you're kind of on a, a somewhat clear area, but there okay. are definitely trees nearby if you want to, like... Uh, yeah, I mostly think that she's going to try to, like, smash it against the nearest tree, like, between her back and the tree. I'm perfectly fine with saying there is a tree nearby. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't think that this is a focused enough to be, like, an actual attack. Like, I think you're still just, like, there's enough just like rah, that, that it's yeah. more like a get it off me than a crush it sort of thing right oh no like she probably kind of staggers and it's just like ah and then like sort of tries to slam it backwards into yeah, there's yeah, one perfect. attempt to like pull it forward and throw it but it's little grabbly fingers <laughs> are just like grab grabble snatching all over your clothes uh what this is, is definitely going to be defying danger i think it's strength right all right so that is a seven Woo-hoo. 
I'm going to give you a, a, a cost and a chance to back down. <clears throat> okay. Um, so you, you're definitely going to like smash it back up against the tree. You can get it off, but if you do, it's going to snatch something off of your person. Or you can continue to have it on your back, but you're like, you'll have stunned it enough that you can like kind of take the initiative on the next action. Let's do the second one. Okay, cool. While that's happening, Alex, you mm -hmm. kind of become aware that, well, one, Karina is as a- Under attack. Yeah, Karina has, has this. Um, you realize that your mess kit has just like disappeared into, into the woods. Into the woods. Yeah. And you also realize you hear like two or three more squeaking noises coming <laughs> from the woods. They are on the other side of Islewyn, and they are up in the trees. Great. Yeah, I think Alex. I think Alex just like takes like three big steps forward to like loom like next to Islewyn, uh, and then like. Jeremy, are they are they low down enough that with like with that like at Alex's height they could reach? If they like reached um, up and tried to grab one? No, no. I think that they are kind of like maybe twelve to fifteen feet up. Okay, yeah, bit 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 high for that. Yeah, yeah. So in which case, I th I think they just kind of like they just like get up so that like Eilwyn is not solo solo like fresh pickings for the Crinwin. Mm -hmm. Then just kind of like go still and like start just like ears straining, eyes like darting around. Mm. Just like where like where is the next one? Where is the <clears throat> one that I haven't noticed? Where where is it going to come from? I think particularly paying attention to behind them because they do know from the stories that Crin would love to strangle people from behind. <laughs> and you've just seen an example of this. Yeah, we've just seen an example of that. All right, cool. So you're going to yeah. be discerning realities. While that's happening, Eilwyn, what are you doing? So I think what she's looking for are like young saplings. Plenty and of them. Yep. Great. Uh, something that is still bendy enough that she could pull it down and back like uh Gorless has been doing with the the snares yeah. yeah but she doesn't have a rope she's not setting up a snare or anything she's just gonna fucking pull this back and like let it whap one of these things one the when it comes at you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Great. okay cool uh yeah you find you you take you, you have to step away from alex a couple of steps but you can like sure. uh -huh. get that down and and and, mm -hmm. and it ready um so don't roll anything yet, right? Because you're not like sure. actively under attack. Um, right. But yeah. But I'd like to prep for that. Cool. Um, Alex, go ahead and roll the certain realities then, if you have. I did. What'd you get? I got a five. Okay. Yeah. Not rolling very well today. Yeah. Mark XP. Um, and if you didn't mark That's XP true. before, That's go ahead. true. Let me mark some XP. That's the good news. So I, I think ultimately what it comes down to is you're right that they do like to jump on people from behind and strangle them. Mm. Um, but it, uh, you, you just find yourself being like, ah, oh, son of a, because you hear a noise, right? You hear a noise behind you of something coming towards you and you turn and there's like, like and I you put my back somewhere else. Yeah. Well, it, it's that you could have sworn that, that that you heard the sound of something scrabbling and jumping on you from behind. And when you turn back, there's one of them in like just sort of like off to the brush, and it's just like <laughs> making the noise of something scrabbling. And you're like <laughs> fuck, and so one of them the like. <laughs> And sure enough, one of them is like <laughs> grabs onto you from behind and is just like <laughs> and did, like those extra long lit fingers are just wrapped around your 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 neck and starting to squeeze. Um so you're gonna be taking a d6 of damage. Yep. Uh and you've got a crinwin strapped around your, you know, on your back, on your sizable yep. back, uh 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 peeling. Uh, 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 or like like crushing your fingers. Meanwhile, Eilwyn, you like see one of the, the like the other one like from the tree, like like mm -hmm. when you kind of like maybe like look back at the same time, 
kind of register the same thing that 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 Alex did. And you're like, oh no, you don't, and it it's coming. Mm -hmm. Um, so you get your tree ready. Yeah. Please work. All righty. Uh, I will work with what I've got. I will roll plus int. Ha <laughs> That's a thirteen. <laughs> Whoa. Um, Pick choose one from the list below, roll plus int on a seven plus it works on a 10 plus pick one more, you get that too. So I will impede or interrupt their actions. Do I want to create an advantage that grants you or an ally advantage on the next roll to exploit it or just straight up deal some damage? These things um, are pretty fragile. I think that would just deal damage okay. more than more than creating a fictional situation that would give you or Karina a, a chance to actually hurt it. Yeah. Do you think this is bruises and scrapes, or do you think this is some some blood bloodshed? Might put out an eye. It might. Um, Eilwyn is also, though, not a large person and very not a strong person. So this is probably not a particularly large or whippy tree. That's fair. So probably I would. Four. I would say probably d4 okay roll a d4 find one there we go that's a four outstanding seriously yeah that's exactly what you needed hey. so uh um your call as to whether you have knocked it out or actually killed it like uh or disabled it or something like that i mean maybe you put an eye out yeah, I feel like what happened was this this tree had like a little bit that stuck out that hit it just wrong and like it went into their eye yeah. as it whacked them in the face. And Iowen can't tell if the thing is just like blunt like blinded in one eye and knocked out. Or if that like went into its brain and killed it, <laughs> like, okay, what? We'll figure that out after the battle. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll count the dead. <laughs> so there's a thwack, and like the thing clump, crumples. It's got like a black oozing mass out of its blood, out of out of its eye, um, and and Eilwyn is standing over like. Uh, <laughs> All right, Karina, you have a Krinwin, like you you managed to like it back against the tree enough times to make it like go a little bit slack, okay. um, <clears throat> but it's still there. But okay. you're like, okay, my turn. What do you do? <laughs> Is its head like visible over my shoulder? Oh, uh, let's see here. So I, I was sort of guessing that you had your uh, shield strapped on your back. Yeah, probably. Okay. Um, and probably, like, do you carry the maul in your hand usually, or do you... She knew we were getting close to Krinman territory, and she's been on her guard, especially after we encountered a rage drake. I feel like she would have had the maul out. Okay. So I think what it's got at, at this point, it basically, like, grabbed onto the, the shield... Right, like with one hand, it was it was grabbed under the back of the shield, and it probably had its its feet planted on the shield as well, and it was yeah. like reaching okay. over your head like this, okay. and so when okay. you bashed it, it kind of just like, um, okay. so it's like you've got a limb kind of flailing around over to the like the okay. right of your head, and you know that it's back there somewhere. So she's going to kind of like throw her head to whichever direction she thinks the Crinwin is not in, and try to like bash it in the face with her maul. Okay. Yeah, I think the only real reasonable way to do that would be to basically just, like, use the head as just, like, a blunt thing instead of, like, swinging the maul. I think you need to visualize it better, like... Picture a sledgehammer. Sweet. Yeah, and so, like, the but... handle would get caught on the lip of the shield. <clears throat> yeah, if you, like, jabbed, like, with a baseball bat, like... Yeah. Or just like like have your head right underneath the head of there, your hand right under the head of the thing, like just crunk, crunk, crunk. it's still awkward as hell, but it's still, you know, it's not like uh it wouldn't be flailing. It's the world's yeah. most okay. extreme knuckle duster. So you're doing that, you're just like like smashing back over your head with this thing. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I think this is hacking and slashing. So roll right. plus strength. 
Um, so that is a eight. So on a seven to nine, your maneuver works mostly, deal your damage, but you suffer your enemies attack. What is my damage? Um, I think a D6. D6? Even though it's a mall? Damage is based off of you, not your weapon. Okay. It is forceful, that's right. Uh, it means it's likely to knock it right the fuck off, or stun it, or, you know. Do I add anything? Like, do I add my strength modifier? Nope. No. Okay, so um, that's, that's a four. That, okay, well, that, I mean, that is enough to kill it. Uh, so that's good. Um, so you are going to, I'm just going to go with the obvious, and, like, as you are trying to smash it, like, it takes a couple of, of blows before you finally, like, land it. And, like, while you're doing that, it's just, like, like grabbing at the back of your hair and, and your head and just, like, ah, 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 and, and, and then it's just, yeah. Um, so take a d6 of damage. Okay. Uh, your armor from the shield will help. I have a move. I'm not sure if it applies. Uh, oh. My move is I get knocked down. When you take damage despite your best efforts to avoid it, you can choose to have the damage but pick one of the following. Did you roll the damage already? Yeah, so with, is, is my armor, so is the shield plus, one. so then that's five. Oh, wow. Because I rolled okay. six. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, uh, so yeah, you are, you can, um, you can use, I get knocked down. Uh, absolutely, that's, this is what it's for. So which one of those three do you choose? Because she's super distracted and she's doing this like really awkward move to like bash something face in, like mm -hmm. over her shoulder, that she's not paying super careful attention to where her feet are. And I already established that she backed up to the tree. So she probably like stumbles over a tree root or something. Perfect. Okay. So you like, uh, you basically like trip on a rant, uh, like as you're smashing this thing. Um, mm -hmm. And like, oh man, you thought they smelled bad on the outside. Uh, you know, <laughs> like when you, when you finally connect and crush the thing's skull, it's just this like horrible, like colder than it should be black Ugh. blood that just is like getting all over you. You're like, oh, and then, and then you trip on a branch and like you only take half damage. Let's make it two. So we'll say you divided it by half and then apply your armor. Um, you like go down and like, as you do, there's like a, a, a scrambling sound through the, the brush. You're like, ah, shit, here comes another one. Okay. Um, jumping back to Alex and Eilwyn. Um, mm. Eilwyn, you like have just like put one of them's eyes out and it's sitting there. And this might be the first time you've ever maybe killed like uh, uh, really hurt something. I don't know. Um, meanwhile, your buddy Alex has one of them on its back, or like on their back, like like trying to choke the life out of them. Um, <clears throat> so my question- I mean, this, this tree's real effective. I can try and use it again. <laughs> Alex, what are what are you doing while while this happens or while while Elwin is saying this? I think this is one of the times. One of the it's the first time we've seen where like Alex's reflexes are useful and not a hindrance. Mm -hmm. In the, like like as soon as there is weight on their back and like someone else's like flesh touching like anything near their throat, it's like one hand, like one hand just under the elbow, one hand on the wrist. And then, like, the, the, the muscle memory says, and just, like, fucking flip them. And then Alex, like, consciously, like, stops, checks, like, it's too small. It's too small, it's too grabby, that's not going to work. And so they just snap its arm in half. You know, based on everything that we've already established about Alex, I'm fine just going straight to the hack and slash here. All right. That's a six. Would you like to burn bright? I would like to burn bright, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, so that's a that's a seven. Uh, and I feel like this is the point at which I should I should observe uh, that uh, Alex's bare hands are both forceful and messy. Yep. Well, first of all, you roll your damage. Yeah. Which I Could someone not... with a d4 please roll a d4 oh. for me? <laughs> 
three this time. So they do have one armor um, <clears throat> from from being like quick and and, and fast and, and and everything. In and this you are, circumstance, does their quickness and, and fastness help? I think it does. Okay. Because what I think ends up happening is you only get a grip on like a, like a solid grip on one of the limbs. Yeah. And the other one it manages to like pull out, and while you are snapping it, it just like reaches its hand around your face. And starts just like 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 yeah. like trying to get a purchase there. So you're gonna take a d6 of damage from it. Okay. Um, and tell me what you get. Uh, one. One. Okay. So it fails to get a purchase. Um, I think actually what it gets purchased on is your hair, right? And I it's have... like, Do oh, I does have... Alex have hair? I'm trying to remember. Did we ever bald? I thought we... bald? I thought we went bald. That no, sounds that does sound familiar. So That's probably why mind. it's having such trouble. Like, there's nothing really to grab. It's yeah, it's grabbing onto that, and it, so it basically it just gets its like claws like right in yeah. your forehead, and you just get like a little <laughs> going across. But like, because your move, your your attacks are forceful and messy, you like end up like end up getting both hands on one of its limbs and just like <laughs> and. And if, and and if you want, you are perfectly able to just like fling this thing to the ground. Yeah, I think that sounds like a that sounds like a good call. So I'll win a like uh, now like 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 a a a, a Crinwin like slumps down in front of you. It is making the same noise as a wounded rabbit. <clears throat> um, okay. That that like Oof. terrible like, like heart wrenching scream. Uh. Um, <clears throat> and and it's definitely like looking at its arm like just and, and like kind of trying to get up to its feet you're you're not positive but you're pretty sure that that thing is terrified so um, what do you do i don't know that Iowen would act because she's so unused to combat and this is so weird like, I think that scream would be so off-putting that I think she would freeze. I, I think that's a incredibly human reaction. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> all right, let's cut from there to Karina, who is like, fuck, right? Like, covered in gore and on your back, like, foot kind of twisted, and there's you just know that there is one of them coming at you. What do you do? Do I know what direction? It's coming at your right, it's coming towards your right foot. Okay. And you're on your back. Is it visible yet? Like if you kind of like get up, you can kind of see roughly where it is. So I think she's just trying to get up. I think she's trying to get a better hand on her maul and get her shield out. So there's definitely like a danger of the Crinwin like getting to you and, and like closing the distance and attacking before you're able to ready yourself. Okay. Um, so I think this is going to be defined into probably with Dex. Fox cause. Fox cause. Fox cause. <laughs> oh. You got a 12? I got a 12. All right. So does um, this mean... So... Oh, once uh, per level, so I don't get to increase uh, my stat. Right. You've already, you've already increased your charisma once. You are, like, basically, like, able to just, like, in one smooth motion, like, hop up you know, like, like swing, you know, get into position and you're like ready for this thing as it's coming at you. Um, do you wish to engage? She's ready to like fucking croquet this bitch into the underbrush. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now you're going to roll hack and slash. So that is 10. So your maneuver works as expected, croquet this bitch into the underbrush. Uh, <laughs> do you wish to avoid, prevent, or counter your enemy's attack, or strike hard and fast for an extra d6 damage for your enemy's attack? She took the trouble to get her shield up, so I feel like her instinct would be to block with her shield at the same time as she's like yeah. swinging for the tree line. So right. I, I think it makes the most sense to say that she avoids or, oh. or, or counters the enemy's attack. Yep, 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 yep. Great. Roll your damage. Three. Three. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's basically just like you time it right, where it's just like, nope. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
and exactly it, it never even gets a chance to like close distance with you um <clears throat> and yeah if it's forceful man the it like ends up slumping into the grass right like off the, the breath and it like takes a second to get up and as soon as it does it fucking runs it, <laughs> it is it is out of here um <laughs> Alex, you have just like cleared the foe, right? Uh, it's now screaming in front of you. I'll win is freezing. What do you do? We get that like, you know that thing that bulls do right before they come fuck you up? We just get the little, the little like irritated snort. Alex like cracks their wrists and then their elbows and like limbers up. Uh, and then just like immediately like eyes to the trees behind Iowen. Are there any Crinwin there? So you're if, like if, scouting. If yes, if yes, engage. If no, like ears to the ready. Are there any Krenwin behind? Like, all right. So I think I am going to ask you to discern realities. Alex has spent the last twelve years hearing a lot about Krenwin, but has now actually fought a Krenwin up close, mm -hmm. and has now done the math of like a Krenwin v Alex matchup is not a good time for a Krenwin because Alex has longer arms. <laughs> like that's not a close up fight you want to be in if you're a Krenwin. No. That is a 10 on the Discern Realities. Seems like uh, you were asking what else should you be on the lookout for? Yeah, what should I be on the lookout for? I think it's definitely one of um, Honestly, at this point, the answer is right now, not much. Yeah. Um, because like th you spot a couple of them that are just sort of like watching and like, you know, like they, they definitely were not expecting things to go the way that they went. Mm -hmm. um and like when the one of them starts to flee and the other one's screaming in front of them they're just like starting to just scamper away and like well, i don't want I'm, not with, I'm not with them like yeah <laughs> they haven't quite fled yet but they're definitely not in they're not good. they're not coming at you um you do see like when like you you do take stock and you're like okay there's uh like two more in the trees kind of like further back from where you guys were there's the one with your mess kit that like went up the tree and and uh, is kind of watching to see how things went or see how things go, but that's it. Uh, and then there's yeah. the one that Karina just scared off. What here is useful or valuable to me? The one that's right in front of you that is screaming mm. would sure make a good example to the rest of them. I had already had this thought, Jeremy. <clears throat> like. <laughs> We're on a wavelength. Um, what here is not what it appears to be? One of the ones that is hanging back, mm. and I'm kind of answering, you know, who is, you know, what really in control here, but yeah, it's also like, kind of a like, yeah. what's not what it appears to be. One of the ones that is hanging back has a knife in its hand mm. and mm. is clearly like, taking things in a little bit more smarter than your average bear smarter and a, maybe even a little bit bigger and so i think like alex just like takes a big step forward like one hand wraps around the front of this wounded crinwin and grabs its like other shoulder the other hand just like palm, like this massive hand just like palms its face mm -hmm. and i think alex like picks it up like basically effortlessly turns their back so that they are facing the Crinwood with the knife, but also coincidentally so that their back is between Eilwen and the visual of what is about to happen. Mm -hmm. And they just make like, they don't look at the thing, they don't like, it is not a living being that they are holding, it is like a, it is like a piece of wood. Yeah. And they just make direct eye contact with the one with the knife with somewhat of the energy of like, oh, like you, you like to, like you like to throttle people and then just like, Tuck! And just like breaks it, snaps its neck. What's your hope out of out of doing this? Like, what are you trying to get them? I want them to leave us the fuck alone. Okay, I think this is going to be a parlay. Uh, and I am acting on uh, yes. the discerning reality's answers. Um, all right, that would be a six. But thankfully, I have uh, XP to spare, so I'm going to burn bright again. They reveal something you can do to convince them that would likely be costly, tricky, or distasteful. 
it doesn't flinch when you do that. Mm. And what I think you realize is like, okay, I have overestimated the humanity of of my enemy. Yeah. And if you want to if you want to drive this point home, you will have to savage this thing. <sighs> Who am I? <laughs> I think there was a moment where like Alex like like stops and like and actually considers it. Right? Like there is no like snap decision here. There's like they stop and they like think about what they want to do. And then they hear like whatever like small noises Eilwyn is making behind them. And they just like shake their head and they just like gently like cradling this Krenwin body, just like lay it down on the ground and sigh. Um, and the thing that you were looking at like slinks away, yeah. but it has this like look on its eyes of I'll be back. Yeah, sure it does, motherfucker. <laughs> that's, to the, that's to the Krenwin, not to you, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no, I, I, I um Karina, I think you can like turn back in time to see Alex like gently laying the one they killed mm -hmm. down on the ground. And like you kind of register the other Krenwin kind of just like retreating into the into the canopy. Yeah, she's still definitely in like who's next mode. <laughs> I think yeah, seeing that Karina, uh, that Karina is still like full of energy, I think Alex is like, Alex suggests that she like go gather some firewood. Karina gives Alex this look that is equal parts bitch make me and ugh, I hate it when you're right. Um, and then I think Karina says loudly, I'm going to go check to see if they're gone. And then she like, walks off. Oh. And they may hear the sound of something very large and made of iron being swung angrily into the side of a tree. Yeah. Sort of distantly after she has gotten out of sight range. Alex like slumps back down on the like fallen tree trunk that they were sitting on before mm -hmm. and lets out, you know, heaves a sigh and just says kind of like uh, softly at Eilwyn as like an invitation She's not being particularly subtle today, is she? I, um, I, that, that's how she is. You know, um, did I kill it? And Alex, Dad? like, sighs again, heavier this time, gets back up, walks over to the Krenwin body, and yeah, just like stoops down, like, feels for a pulse. Roll yeah. a die of fate. Woof. <laughs> oh, no. That's, that's a two? It's not dead. Yeah, so I think Alex, Alex like turns to look up at you and is like, it's still alive. I've never done anything like that before is, is all. Um, I know. Like I know the, the, the hunters say that everybody's, you know, Everybody's got to do something like that sometime. But I never thought I that would be me. It's different to when it's a stag versus, and I think Alex just kind of like gestures down at like the fundamentally kind of human shaped nature of the Kringlin. Mm -hmm. Is it is it easier? When it's when it's a rabbit, they they just make like a noise, <laughs> like a real woof, like a, a just a noise. Um, and I think they just say, if "We're gonna have this conversation. I need to sit down first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they like sit down on the log, and they're like, "Oh, and is there any like gunk?" And they're like gesturing at like the claw marks on the top of their head. I mean, not nearly as much as Karina. And I think for the first time, like, in this interaction, they, like, meet your eyes. Mm -hmm. And they just look, like, very, very sad and very tired. And they say, do you want me to tell you the truth or do you want me to tell you a helpful lie? I feel like my life has been helpful lies to this point. I 
I want to know the truth, even if it doesn't help. If you let it, it gets very fucking easy. Should I be proud, Alex? It's about proud of what? You're still alive. I'm still alive. Karina's still alive. That's plenty to be proud of. You stood up for the people you care about. You kept them safe. There's plenty to be proud of in that. It's a very hard balance to find. Your life is precious. There's no wrong in defending yourself or the people you love. As extreme as it may need to get. But if you're going to take a life, do so deliberately. And don't don't tell yourself it's necessary or it's meaningless, or it's noble. And they like spit on the ground. Yeah, and I think they like smile at you and they're like, then you're already doing better than I did. All right, um, so Karina, you have kind of like gone off, you're covered in, in gore um, and beating a tree to work out your, your adrenaline and aggression. I think what she does, like, it's a, both a self-soothing technique and a practical thing to do. She starts um, essentially like doing a perimeter and kind of like trying to redirect her frustration. And so she's like redirecting her energy and attention into doing a, just doing a full perimeter, looking for any danger um, and trying to pay attention to the woods and just like, do her best ranger impression, basically. <laughs> All right. Um, are you looking to the GM for insight, or are you just sort of like, uh, you know, doing your due diligence to make sure that that? Uh... I think she would go as far as like, essentially discerning realities. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah I mean that's basically what I was going for. Can you um, put the oh, sure. moves? Again, on screen sharing so that I can look at my my playbook and then still be able to read it. I got two ones. Karina can't find her own ass with both hands. I'm not particularly interested in throwing another fight in your way, so I'm looking for a different move that I can make. Jeremy, I have a suggestion. What you got? She notices the sun is starting to go down. Like we just realized that like it like we we burned up more time than we thought we did, and like it's nearly nighttime. Yeah, I like it. Like, if you want to try and find these ruins before the sun goes down, you're going to have to move very quickly. And even then, it's going to be a questionable thing. I like it. Thanks, Luke. And mark XP if you didn't already. I did. I'm going to, unless Jer objects, I'm going to say that she did take the time to, like, wash. Like, she didn't take a fucking bath, but she washed the worst of the goo off herself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's a little bit disconnected from the discern realities check, but it's like, Okay, we're fine. Then you go down and you wash up. And then it's like, as you're coming back, you're realizing, oh, fuck. Like, it yeah. is way later than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. uh, Alex, you don't tell me that you actually do have a little bit of Crinwin goo on you because you had one basically in a bear hug and, you know, like, and yeah. the pustules. I scrape it off with a stick. Okay. Uh, the, the other thing that I would just wanted to point out is that you have an unconscious but blind Crinwin with you, and you've got a dead Crinwin body. So if like you want to in like take a closer look at these things, you certainly can. Yeah. No, I don't think. I don't think that's where her predilections lie. Okay. So Karina, what are you? Uh, uh, like, do you say anything or do anything as you get back up there? How long has it been? Do you think? 15 to 20 minutes like it probably took longer to I think I think where you ended up losing more time was with uh like like cleaning the, the gore off there was just way more of it than you thought there was so she took some damage can you remind me like where that actually appears in like in the fiction like she get a claw to the face or yeah I think it was just like some like like the thing like clawing at your face, pulling on your hair, like it-, it Back it, of the neck, I think we yeah. said. Did it break the skin? A little bit, yeah. One, she's like, pretty sure she still smells like crinwin goo, which is fucking gross. Mm -hmm. um, but 
she is a little concerned about the goo getting in her wounds. Yeah. So I think the thing on her mind is to come back and ask Alex, do you have anything for to keep, like to keep infection at bay? Like that's kind of where her head is at when she comes to the clearing. Oh I'm shit, where's the dog? What's the dog oh been doing God. during all of this? <laughs> I have to retcon that shit. Um, Overwhelmed by the stink of the Krenwin. Caradoc, <laughs> no, no, no. We're, we're, we're going to just say that Caradoc took care of his own Krenwin. Yeah, so then I, I think Rita says, I got some of that gunk in some of my wounds. Do you have anything, a poultice or something, to keep it from getting infected? Yeah, I think I do. Um... I am going to uh, use my last undefined small item to produce some herbal remedies. I will count this as uh, the recover move, if you would like. Sweet. Yeah, sick. And so, yeah, I think Alex, like, reaches in their pocket and pulls out, like, a little clay pot and kind of, like, you know, brushes their hands off uh, of any goop on some grass. Uh, and then kind of like scoops their finger in there and pulls a bit out under their thumbnail, and they're like, "All right, hold still." <laughs> like, start smearing it on all the wounds on the back of your neck. Give yourself four hit points back. And Jeremy, does this also count as tending to a problematic wound? You have taken far more care with this wound than I typically would expect any adventurer to, so uh, you're fine. Yeah, and I think Alex like takes the last of it and just like dabs it on, smears it on their forehead over their little, like, set of scratch marks. Night's coming. Yeah. I think Karina kind of glances over at Eilwen to see how she's doing. Get up firewood. <laughs> Building a fire. I'm getting it. Getting it ready. Just, you know, doing the thing. Not, not spending too much time thinking about things mm -hmm. right now so so now you have seen something that only a handful of folks in the village have got some good stories to tell when we get back this is this is said slightly sarcastically like she's not trying to be mean she's kind of observing oh what a fun story this is to tell i think i wouldn't definitely like you're making fun of me karina act looks like visibly surprised when Eilwen says this and she says no I'm not you think this is like a story worth telling I think mm. you've gone farther than almost anyone in the village has except for the folks who range this far for their jobs you've seen things and defended yourself against things that I guarantee no one else your age has you did a pretty good job, considering how creepy those little bastards are. And then I froze. I mean, if you had not reacted like that, honestly, Eilwen, I would be a little worried about you. Everybody freezes their first time. I got knocked off my horse the first time I had something coming at me because I didn't know what to do. You did fine. You're saying I. I... I got through this okay? Honestly, you're doing better than I was afraid you were. Thank you. You you have a little bit of daylight left, not much. You could press on through the valley, get up into the yew trees, and start trying to follow Gorlas's path. You know it can't be too far because he made it to this place. In worse shape in than worse we shape. are. Yeah, in, in far worse shape, like with a head wound, basically. So it can't be that far, um, but you would definitely like increase the risk and danger of getting lost as you try and find, like follow his path to find this place. Let's stay put. We've got firewood. It's already almost dark. We can leave at first light. We'll just keep watch tonight to make sure those little bastards don't come back. Um, because she, she personally doesn't love the idea of coming near any sort of magical ruins without daylight. Does anyone feel differently? I mean, they know we're here. They know where to find us. That's that's the only thing I'm scared of. Best to stay put, I think. I those things were hard enough to spot in daylight, and hard enough to tell mimicry from sound. 
I wouldn't want to be doing it in the dark. I want to take your point. Would you say we move on 20 minutes walk uh, down and they kind of like indicate like to the left down the slope into the valley? Okay. Just so we're not exactly where they left us and I'll okay. make a fire. Sounds like a plan. All right. Yeah, and as as I make this fire, Jeremy, I say a familiar prayer to heal you. I was expecting that you would. Can I assist? Ooh, that's a good question. You well, are I a fellow. I'm... You are a fellow member of the faith, and we have established that we like we do do ritual together on like on yeah. the holy days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell me. I mean, like roughly. Don't go into great detail, but like. How, what does it look like to have, have someone assist you in invoking the sun god? If I can ad lib a little, Alex, I suspect mm. some of what it is is just like, it's like a call and answer thing. Mm. Like, and I think maybe you choose a prayer that has a, a response and it isn't like, it, it's more like you're invoking and then Karina's sort of like echoing or answering. So yes, that is a assist. Or an eight. Hell yeah. Um, Let's see how this goes. And I assume you're doing Terrible as the Dawn against Grinwind? Yes, that okay. is indeed my intention. Uh, that is uh, a five and a one. Uh, three. And a three, which makes an eight. Plus mm -hmm. one makes a nine. Yay. And I do not have enough XP to burn brightly a third time. No, uh, Luke, you have enough XP to, you have enough XP to level, so you can spend... Oh, shit, it's not, it, it, there's no, like, it can't take you below, oh, great, in right. which case, fuck it. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna burn brightly, and I'm gonna make that nine, uh, I'm gonna make that nine a ten. Cool. So, a ten plus it works as described, but you must choose one consequence. Consequence. I think you must bask in sunlight for an hour or so before using that invocation again. Okay. The night passes uneventfully. Um, you don't like they. They don't even come near you. It's like like you're pretty sure that when everyone who's, who's on watch, like no one really even. There's a couple of like, hmm, what was that? But it's like a bat or yeah. you know a uh, um, you know like a, a possum or something like that, right? There you really don't have any encounters. Uh, to, to, to speak of. Um, does anyone wish to do anything during making camp? I was just going to ask if we were making camp. Yes, um, we are making camp. The move. Yeah. Yes. Because I have a debility I would like to clear. Oh, do yeah. Well, actually, see? sorry, it does dawn on me. You're going to need to um, uh, eat. And mm. that means everyone, you need to each use up one supplies. Mm since you no longer have a mess kit. Someone is going to have to turn an un undefined into a supplies, and then you'll need to spend three supplies. I can do that. You're a wonder. Like, what is prosperity currently, Jer? It's zero. Zero? Okay. So I have one left. So yes, you do get to the benefits of making camp. Do we also, uh, while we're at it, want to keep company? I'm going to recommend that we skip it just because we've had a lot of like character to character stuff. No, that's a good point. Kind of like a, to get us into the ruins. Into the ruin? No, that sure. fair point. So when you settle into rest in an unsafe area, answer the GM's questions about your campsite. You've answered my most important one, which is how do you deal with the Krenwin? And that is you light a holy fire. Each of you consume one use of supplies or provisions, which has already been done. And if you eat and drink your fill and get at least a few hours of sleep, pick one, regain hit points equal to half of your max, or clear a debility. I'm your rest clear is ability. I also am clearing a debility. I'm just going to regain all of my hit points because I don't think I have a debility to clear. So just to make sure, is there any other mechanical or important like preparation type things that anyone wants to do before the next day? Karina does something which is pretty uncharacteristic for her and asks Alex to bless her, like as they head Ooh, into the shit. And I think that she would take care to do it when Eilwyn isn't like either isn't awake or is not immediately present. So I think she's self-conscious about it. I'm curious, like, when Karina comes to Alex oh. with this, does she talk at all about, like, why? 
Or is it just a kind of like a wordless, like gruff, like nudge on the shoulder, like, come on, like give me a blessing kind of thing. I don't think she volunteers the information, but it's not something she does on the regular at all. Yeah. Is it just the thing that's waiting for us that you're worried about? And I think their eyes kind of like, you know, they like meet your eyes and then their eyes kind of like glide off towards Eilwyn and like the staff lying next to her. Karina hesitates. And then I think what she finally says is, I hope that's all I have to worry about, but I'm afraid there might be more. Yeah. And so I think like they reach inside their robes. I'm going to spend my last supplies to mark an additional undefined small item and then turn that into quote unquote herbs, which I'm going to interpret. um, I'm going to interpret that loosely. Yeah. I think they pull out like another one of these little clay kind of like stoppered jars. And this one is full of like olive oil that has been infused with sumac and lemon peel and cinnamon and like a bunch of the like holy herbs and the holy spices and the holy like plants that are grown in Lagos. Oh my God, I love this. And I think they just like unstop the thing, like dip their finger in there and then like draw like a solar disc on each of your wrists on the inside, like right where the blood vessels are closest to the surface. And then like stop at the thing and like take your hands in theirs and like look like really deeply into your eyes. And in Lego see the two of you say like, you know, this specific prayer together. I love this. And yeah, like by the end of it, right? Like the heat of your skin has like bloomed the olive oil slightly. And so like the perfume of like a Ligosi temple is like all around us. And for a moment, for a moment, it feels like we are in like a safe and holy place, despite the fact that we are out here in the wild and you still have some Krinwin goo on your tunic. And I've got like these little scratches above my eyes and everything is terrible. And like the staff is right over there. But like for a moment, we can pretend. I enjoy the idea of the eye like glaring at us like we hate it, precious. Fuck you. Yeah. You know? ah. <laughs> no, no, there's absolutely a cut of that and and uh like a <laughs> quick shot of it that's like <laughs> narrowing a little bit. <laughs> and and I'll win kind of like, mm, mm. like like putting a hand on it. All right. Next one. Uh Eilwyn, can you roll me the die of fate? Three. Ah, ah. It's um, kind of overcast. Uh, there might, it kind of looks like there might be showers later in the day. But it's, for now at least, it's just sort of like cold, feels kind of wet. Um, not the best traveling weather, but it is also not by far the worst. So um, you head out? We okay. strike camp. Yeah, so I'm kind of wondering, like, how are you all going about looking for Gorless's marks and trying to find them without kind of, like, getting lost or or, or losing track of each other or running afoul of danger? Yes? I have a tracking dog, and I have a rag from Gorless. You do! It's That's right! And that's delightful. I'm going to make up for having forgot about my dog for the first three hours <laughs> by using him very well right now. Is track by scent one of Caradog's specific things? Yeah, it is. One of his specific moves is track by scent. Yeah. If it was one of you trying to find the, your way or find the way, I would make you defy danger with the risk of getting lost. But I think that like having a tracking dog and and some of this guy's stuff, it's just a matter of time. And yeah, you're able to to do it. So we've got time to we got time to burn. Caradog, Caradoc, really, let's use his right name. Uh, uh, leads you up into this fucking haunted feeling wood. Every now and then you do see a, a like big gash on the trees from where Gorlis like clearly was marking his route. And it's nothing subtle, right? Like he stopped and he like like chiseled a, 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 a number of things out or you know like like a big gout out like an x every maybe 100 feet um probably even less than that now that i think about it uh and eventually you get kind of to the top of that rise and it levels out like you get up to the top and you get up to that plateau and and then Caradox just starts whining and getting looking around like all sorts of confused. And he, like 
like he goes back on the path that he followed and then like he you know his tail is down and he's kind of whining and doesn't really know what's going on and and just you can tell that he's lost the scent but you can also tell that he doesn't realize like like he's confused as to why he lost the trail okay something's off he's lost the scent and i'm not sure why i think we're getting near wherever it is we're going let's take a look around before we what go an to that, excellent yeah. idea oh <laughs> uh, is Iowan gonna get the get the staff out i mean if the dog can't follow the sense before you roll what do we what do what do the others see the others see Iowen like gripping the staff and again doing the like get real concentrate uh hunker down try like she's not looking around mm -hmm. the eye is and maybe like the pupil in the eye has started you know to wiggle a little bit that's preposterous like, if we that's that's it that's must be a trick of the light <laughs> it must be a trick of the light um, all right shall throw I? them bones let's see how this goes <laughs> Five. Well, <laughs> Can well I help? on the upside, I have unlocked the staff. Oh, uh, is that good news? <laughs> is that good news? I don't know, but I'm going to mark an XP. Uh, okay. So you, um, you're gripping the staff and mm -hmm. you know like doing the whole like concentration thing and you're like oh fuck, here we go again uh and you suddenly like like get overwhelmed with this just barrage of images um okay. and you see it's night there is fire like something's burning the little snippets that you get make it seem like some sort of like impossibly large house there are people running around and screaming a good chunk of that big house is what's on, is on fire you get the sense of being like amongst fields or an open plain or something like that almost like the, the area around the stone right okay. kind of like a like an open courtyard or um area but again it's night it's hard to tell what's going on there's another source of fire and you realize that it's someone something maybe like three times as tall as everyone else that is like tied to a stake and like it's on fire and you see antlers kind of like 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 uh uh flailing about in there this is not like one continuous scene right it's like flashes of this and then flashes of that and you see like one group of people hurting other group of people into a stone building. Um, there's another flash and then there's a like back to the tall beam that's on the at the pyre, like screaming out words that you can't even have like imagined hearing having heard before. Um, and then there's like a, another flash of people running throughout the courtyard. There's a new sense of panic throughout the, the 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 area the house that you saw is and it doesn't make any sense but it's like the house unwound from itself and then you just get from there flashes of something big and powerful and fast and utterly relentless just chomping through things the Sindareg was a child compared to what this thing is doing. And people are just screaming and running. And it's clearly like scattering the crowd. And there's just more fire and there's more screaming and there's more fleeing. And eventually you find yourself standing in where you realize is right here. And there's a somewhat steady stream of what you recognize as forest folk based off of your previous vision uh, at the stone fleeing like like just pouring out and running away and kind of standing among them are these very strange figures one of them looks like almost like a tree 
standing like a tree shaped like a man, like long, long limbs, very pointed face, uh, fingers like 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 little twiggy branches. Um, and it is kind of like 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 unfurls itself and stands tall and just starts like waving its hands and the 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 burning and the screaming and everything like that just starts to be like it's like the forest itself is reaching up and wrapping around it and and there's a weaving of reality and this everything from that scene all the screams that are still coming from in there and the fire and the smoke and the, the smell of blood it all just just gets hidden <clears throat> and the the figure that was doing the weaving just collapses and starts to like <sighs> solidify and and uh twist and becomes just a a tree what species of tree would that be jeremy yeah it's a yew tree um and when your eyes like sort of poof, pop open from this and you you kind of like collapse right like mm -hmm. uh you know just hyperventilating a little bit um oh, emotional overload but you sort of look up and like the camera the camera angle is like on its side on the ground from Eilwyn's point of view and it's kind mm -hmm. of like hands up a little bit and to that tree to that tree Eilwyn you know like falls down uh Alex and Karina you see this happen um maybe are expecting it I it, it... so Karina does not rip the staff out of Eilwyn's hands and fling it into space this time she does she tries to catch Eilwyn and help like lower her to the ground it passes actually relatively quickly. Um, Caradoc is kind of like whining and whinny and, and like tail between his legs and backing away from 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 the staff when this is happening. Um, Alex, are you doing anything differently or are you just kind of waiting for it to pass? Or? Alex is just kind of like from where they're standing, just like looking around the clearing and like trying to, you know, like trying to find where Gorlas is like actual like physical like boot print tracks are mm. along the path that we followed in and then like kind of trying to follow the path as to like all right like maybe his spell his smell stops but like where is the last boot print because sure. i think alex is fairly alex buys kind of like fairly well into karina's theory that like there is some kind of like magical nature to the like the space that Gullis oh, yeah. went to in its timeless weirdness as yeah. so, like where is the last step that Gullis took here before stepping sure question sure. mark wherever so that sounds like you are going to be setting realities three realities um I'll win I think you're going to kind of like come to while they are doing this and kind of like looking around um if you want to stop them before they get to the point of rolling, I'm fine with that. I don't think so. No, go for it. All right. Cool. That's a four. <laughs> I should have. All right, cool. Glad we're rolling so well tonight. Love to end the session on a miss. I'll win. You are kind of like coming to and I think Karina is maybe like a little bit focused, still focused on the staff, right? Mm. Um, Alex steps away and starts like like following the trail. And maybe like Karina, you kind of like look up and you know, like maybe there's a little bit of like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm looking for footprints. And then like you look back down to uh, Islewyn and kind of like to check on her and then maybe Alex says something and it cuts off. And then you look back and Alex is gone. Karina's gonna hit so many things with her mall. <laughs> I'm specifically interested in like what Eilwyn does because you kind of like wake up and realize that, that yeah, Alex is missing. 
she's going to wrench herself up and wrench herself out of this. I think she's going to take the staff and like start sweeping it around like a fucking metal detector. Um, I love this. In the direction that Alex was at. Like if there's something bad there, this stupid staff can hit it first. (laughs) Because what the shit was that? (laughs) So you kind of like swing the staff around and truck past where Caradoc sta- stopped and, you know, roughly where, and actually you can kind of tell like, all right, that's about, that's where Alex was. And you like swing mm-hmm. the staff and like, there's nothing there. Um, and, and like, Karina, you're kind of like stepping around, lo- like looking, looking at his tracks or looking at their tracks. And it's just like, there's a boot print and then, like there's nothing. Yeah, Vern, I should have mentioned I took a move that lets me go invisible. Um, <laughs> for Iowin, you definitely mm-hmm. like get the sense of like, okay, the staff, like you know the staff could see through the magic if you can mm-hmm. get it to work. Oh yeah. Um, no, she gonna try again. Karina, how are you responding to to, to, to this? Poorly. Oh. No. <laughs> um... <laughs> I do want to point out, Hobbs, Eilwyn has disadvantage on, on, you have disadvantage on your next roll. Mm-hmm. Oof. Karina, you can tell that Eilwyn is about to use the, mat, the the staff again, and she is visibly shaking. I think Karina would look at that and say, can I help somehow? And not don't fucking do that? I'm oh. surprised that you're willing to help. She still um, wants to throw the staff into fucking like the surface of the sun, but she, <laughs> her concern for Alex is overriding that right now. Everyone and she just so really about it. loves like, Alex. So if you're willing to lay hands on the staff and help, uh, uh, help Iowa in focus, I will definitely consider <laughs> that aid. Karina would say, like, can I help somehow? I, I mean, I think that's what she would suggest. <laughs> I mean, can you can you literally give me a hand? Okay, so I think what Karina would do is she gets down on like one knee and she calls Karadoc over and she puts one hand on her dog, and then she tries to like get close so that she is also holding Ilwen, like kind of puts her arm around Ilwen and then puts her hand on the staff because this is very like mm-hmm. I'm not letting either of you go. <laughs> All right, roll. You're, so. You're, the aid that you're providing is going to cancel out the disadvantage. We're rolling 2d6 and seeing what happens. Okay. Eight. <laughs> I, I'm assuming you're choosing the orb sees through illusion, glamour, and invisibility? Yep. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically what happens, and Karina, you see this too, and it is fucking weird um and just spooky as hell like you're you end up closing your eyes and seeing through the staff and it's this like green tinged view of the world um it's not even it's not quite right to even call it sight right it's like a a different way of of sensing your surroundings in the world and sure enough like right in front of you is like a weird opening in reality Hmm. and just past it just inside it you see alex's looming form just sort of like looking about and you know like backlit because you can't even really see him all that clearly um but just looking around like what the fuck just happened (laughs) (laughs) 